Hey, Becca, how are you? Good, how are you, Janice? Pretty good, pretty good. So, do you have any questions for me today? I do. So, um, my question is from parents of, like, from the day we have our kids, we are um, reminded, it seems like, frequently to read to our little kids, to have books available for them. Um, there's like board books and fabric books so that babies can be around reading from day one. Mm -hmm. And um, so I'm wondering if there's something similar with math where it seems like um, I waited until my kids were older, like three, four, five, to mm -hmm. really do anything math related, mainly counting stuff. So I'm wondering if there if there is something similar for math that to start um, like from day one with getting them around math and comfortable with math. You know, it's such a good question, and I I've been I've been interviewing parents, asking them about their math story, and I just find that over and over again, parents are feeling. You know, many parents feel that they're not great, not good at math. They didn't have a good experience as a child with math, and I keep asking myself why. And, um, and asking them why, and it just seems like the math is just not treated, treated so differently than, let's say, reading. So like you were saying, so with reading, you know, we start, you know, reading to infants, to our babies when they're so little, but math starts, you know, later on. And, um, and it, doesn't, it, it doesn't have to start later on. It could start really very early on, um, you know, I guess when we go to the store, you know, we see so many books and games and toys that are suited just for reading. Um, but there really could be a lot of math things. You know, we can do a lot of math um, activities with our kids too. You know, it's as simple as um, talking to them about numbers and, and counting and associating it to things that are like in our, in our real life, whether you're counting your steps, you know, walking to the bus stop or counting, you know, apples or in your, in your basket. But um, you know, introducing it, making it real, and also making it fun. And you can do that at any age. You know, the child can be very, very young, and you can start doing that. They don't have to understand it to um, to start talking to them about it. You can start even before that, so that it's a gradual process. So, you know, like, you know, our kids don't understand the word milk. You know, we say it to them thousands of times before they actually start understanding what we're talking about. Um, and we just keep repeating it even once they do understand what we're talking about. You know, it's the same thing for math. You know, with math facts or anything that has to do with math, kids need to really hear it, you know, so many times before they start understanding it. And for some reason with, with reading, we have like, I spoke to a parent yesterday and she said, you know, she realized as we were talking, she's like, you know, with reading, when my child was having difficult difficulty reading you know I just kept repeating the word over and over again and even though we read it yesterday and I explained the words to the to her she explained the words to her child you know the previous day she said that doesn't bother me at all at all and you know she said she had so much patience for that but when it came to math and she showed her her child what two plus two is and then they forgot it the next day. She was a lot more frustrated because she just had this feeling like they should <laughs> they should remember it. And and we were talking about how many times some you know children need to hear different things before they remember it, and it, and it's a lot. And so there's just this whole this whole this whole this whole perception thing about reading as opposed to other things like science or math or learning the piano or learning how to do anything, you know, it just takes a lot of time. You know, we watch our kids play soccer and try to hit it into the goal and it could take, you know, a year or two to, until your child, you know, makes a goal in a game or even longer. You know, why are we, why are we not providing a lot more practice and um, just more practice time with math and starting earlier? So what do you, what do you see and what have you seen in the classroom and what have you experienced with your kids? Well, from what you were just saying, I had this realization that where you said we talk so much to our kids, um, not expecting them to understand and thinking about like, as infants, we're talking to our kids and they don't understand what we're saying or the complete sentences and, um, and that, but we're still exposing them to that language. 
and thinking about with math that we could be um, like, yes, we're counting with them, but we could be talking to them about putting numbers together and taking numbers apart and manipulating them. So, and they might not get it. They for sure won't get it the first several times they hear it, but, but as they're exposed to it, then when they do get it, it won't be brand new. They'll have heard it a bunch previously from us just talking about it. So that, that's a, that's a, I just realized that, that we don't, I for sure haven't done that with math with my kids and I just yeah. keep it at what I think they're prepared for. <laughs> Yeah, because, and we, yeah, I mean, I, I certainly didn't, I, it didn't even, it wasn't even on my radar until my daughter, you know, was already behind. And then, you know, I changed things for my son, but yeah, it wasn't even on my radar. Nobody had said anything. I hadn't heard about anything. And it was just all about reading, which of course is, is, is really important and, and a, and a really wonderful experience. And I think a lot also has to do with, with the experience and not just the actual learning. And I think, when the experience is good, the learning just automatically happens. But, um, you know, the, the experience of, you know, having your child sit on your lap and reading them, reading to them before bedtime and just, you know, sometimes it's after they take a bath or it's just like the whole, it's, it's just so much more than the actual learning itself. Mm -hmm. The experience is so wonderful and it's wonderful for the parent. The, I mean, as a parent, I mean, I love, I, I, I never wanted to give up my, <laughs> my reading time for really anything because for me, it was so much fun. Um, so of course for my child, it was going to be great. So if we could, if we could, you know, reproduce that for math, just imagine how, how different, how, how many different math stories we'd have. We'd have children that were saying, Oh, I love math. Math is fun. Kids would feel comfortable with it. They would play with it. They would just play around with, um, concepts more be more open just to looking at things as more of a puzzle rather than super challenging and hard mm -hmm. um, so I think there's just a lot a lot to be said for that to just think about how we're relaying math to our kids and and a lot of parents start off by saying I wasn't you know I wasn't good at math so you can imagine what that does to a child <laughs> here that is their first exposure to to math is that their parent wasn't good at it, so how could they possibly be good at it? So I think it starts super young, like you were saying. So, and that's why, yeah, I, go ahead. I love that idea of making math playful and, and like having it be like a puzzle that you're figuring out instead of you have to, you have to solve it this particular way and get to this specific answer and, mm -hmm. and have it be so kind of um, closed and controlled um, but like even just counting steps to the bus stop and one day it takes you 20 steps and then you say, okay, tomorrow let's try and do it in more steps. And so how are we going to change our steps so we get more than 20? And yeah. then the next day, okay, now we want to do less and le let's change our steps so we can get less steps. And um, yeah, that's a great idea. Or how many steps does it take if you're running and how many steps does it take if you're walking? Right. That would be yeah. kind of neat then you're, you're talking about other things too. Now you got some physics in there and yep. um, yeah, that's, that's a real, that's actually a great idea. And you know what, and if you talk to, if you talk to your friends about it, like if you talk to your other, you know, your uh, mom, dad, friends about, let's say just that you mm -hmm. probably could get into these pretty interesting conversations about other things that you could do. And for you, for, for the parent, even it's kind of interesting because yeah, you didn't ever really thought about, okay, how many steps does it take to walk? How many steps does it take to run to a certain place? Um, you know, how long does it take? You know, different things like that. So anyway, I, I just think it's so interesting how we, how we do things and how we do things without really thinking about them until we talk about them. Right, right. So I'm thinking about, like, I'm sure everybody said this when they were in, like, high school math of, like taking pre-calculus and when am I ever going to use this again? Yeah. And, <laughs> and so we even need to, with our little kids, show them math is everywhere and we're always using math and as simple as counting our steps to the bus stop and yeah. or counting how many apples we'll need for everybody to take an apple for lunch to school this week. And yeah. 
and actually, yeah, and yeah, and if you if you can actually stop when you're doing something and then let them know this is meth. So, I mean, and this is this kind of, you know, maybe this doesn't sound very exciting, but of course, when you're in the kitchen, you're using math all the time when you're measuring things or with temperatures. Like it's a good starting place just because you're you're there every day, you know. Right. You know, or if you're you're cutting a sandwich in half or in quarters, you know, you could really start right there. And everyone, honestly, like, I never even thought about that until we just said it. But um, yeah, but you can. There's so many things that you can do to start. And if you start out in a place that you don't feel like it's contrived, then I think it'll start automatically happening more because we don't really think about it as adults. We don't we don't think about it at all. But math, because you know, in the car, you know how fast we're going how many miles we've gone, how many gallons of gas we need to put in. I mean, all of this stuff we could share with them when they're really little, just to start getting them thinking. And it would probably also initiate a really fun conversation with them. So, cause then they would yeah. start asking, wait a second, is math this? Could math be here? Could, and then we would all start thinking about a lot more. Mm-hmm. Should be fun. So anyway, well, thanks, Becca. This was a fun conversation. Yeah, thank you, Janice. (laughs) Thanks. Have a great afternoon, and I will talk to you soon, and we'll introduce our next math topic. All right. Sounds good. Thanks. Thanks. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye.